Hey, welcome back to uh, Harmony Part 3. Um, in the last video, we talked about what extensions are. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about what a voicing is and how we construct voicings um, and uh, how we can analyze voicings and steal them uh, if we see them in transcriptions or if we see them in, uh, in scores, like, like big band scores, for instance. Um, or classical repertoire, uh, like Ravel or Debussy, for example. Uh, they have a lot of dense harmonic uh, language um, that's similar to jazz. Um, so we've talked in the last two videos about putting together basic seventh chords and adding extensions. So you notice that I'm playing a really dense, thick voicing playing a lot of notes all stacked up in thirds and this would be a really difficult voicing to use if I was in a trio setting right or it might not sound very balanced or it might be difficult to uh, might be difficult to touch might be difficult to create a sonority with this voicing so what we do in the jazz world is we tend to compartmentalize voicings uh, into three different sections so the first section is um, root tones. I like to call them root tones, which is ones and fives. So on a C major seven chord, that would be a C and a G. And we actually can omit the fifth. If it's a perfect fifth, if it's a natural fifth, not a sharp five or a flat five, we actually can omit the fifth um, in voicings, which makes them just that much more makes them just that much lighter a little more mobile right we have fewer notes to work with so already the original voicing has one less note in it is a bit more spacious uh, isn't so cramped with all the stacked thirds if we just omit the fifth um, but anyways back to the sections so the first section is root tones ones and fives and we can omit the fifths second section is guide tones guide tones are threes and sevens section would be extensions which is nines sharp elevens and thirteens so the root tones and the guide tones always have to be there except for the fifth which we can omit but the three and the seven will always be in the chord the extensions sometimes they will be sometimes they won't be right there are definitely chords where there's a root in the bass and then there's roots happening up uh, somewhere in the voicing in the middle register or in the upper register even um, but the basic moral of the story here is that um, we can move each of these elements around as separate entities right except for the root the root will always be there unless it's an inversion right but the root will always be in the bass so if we have a C major 7 chord the root will be in the bass and then this 3 and this 7 it'll sing pretty well anywhere in this range so look how I'm inverting the 3 and the 7 separately so now these would all be voicings Would all be possible voicings for a C major 7 right now I could add this sharp 11 or I could add a 9 let's start with a 9 so that would be a good voicing for a C major 9 I'm hitting this root down here or I could also play that root here and that would be a good voicing for a C major 9 I could also do something like this between my two hands but basically what I'm doing here is I'm putting the roots on the bottom, the guide tones in the middle, and the extensions on top, and I'm just moving everything around from there. Now, another thing to keep in mind with jazz harmony is that it's really common when you're in a trio that the bassist is going to be playing the root. So it's very common that you won't be playing roots in your left hand really down low, right? Doesn't mean you're not allowed to play roots, doesn't mean that roots won't appear in voicings. 
like this, or if I want a cluster, something like that, right? Doesn't mean roots can't appear in voicings. Um, it just means sometimes bass players feel cramped if you're down in this range, playing roots really low. Um, it, it happens still, and you'll hear it in recordings, but sometimes bass players will feel cramped if you're doing that. Um, so just know that you don't have to play roots down low. Um, it can free you up in some ways. Um, so for instance, if I don't have to play that bass, now I have room to play these inversions. So here are my guide tones. Here are all my extensions. I don't have to play all the extensions. Could just play two of them. Could just play one of them. Could play one of my extensions and then maybe sneak a root tone in there, sneak a fifth. Could play one extension and sneak a root in. Something like that, right? Um, but for me, a great place to start, if you're a beginner, is always having those threes and sevens in the left hand. And then let's see how many combinations we can experiment with on a C major seven. So we have our three and seven here. We have all these extensions. We have this. We can invert the extensions, move them into a different tessitura, move that nine somewhere else, even maybe do something really textural like Something like that, where I have my roots on the bottom, my guide tones, sorry, my root tones, like my one and my five on the bottom, my guide tones in the middle, and then I've kind of sprinkled the extensions of the chord really up high to create a, a different texture, a thinner texture, uh, something more bright. Um, this is really what voicing is. It's just texture, right? It's why it's the least important thing after rhythm and melody. Voicing is just kind of color. Um, let's try another one. Let's invert the guide tones. So instead of going 3-7, I'll go 7-3. And let's see what sonorities I can come up with. Let's do a 13 and a 9. I'm going to omit that fifth. Let's try another one. Let's move this one up here and try and do something really, really bright. We, maybe we could even double a nine. I don't know about that texture. Right, so doubling notes is a big consideration when building a voicing. What notes do we want to double? Does it make the voicing sound thinner if I double a note, right? Uh, does it add a texture that I like or does it add a texture that I dislike? Um, these are all things to consider. Uh, so these are great for two-handed voicings, but you can also do this with one-handed voicings. So if I start with the three and seven, and then maybe I build, I choose one extension, like a nine, this is a great one-handed voicing for me to solo over. That's a perfectly mobile one-handed voicing. I could also do a 3, 7, and a 13. That's a great one-handed voicing. I could do a 3, 7, and a sharp 11. That's a nice sound. Oops. I could also experiment with doing guide tones plus two color tones or even sneaking in some root tones some ones and fives there if I like that sound right there it is with a root two color tones nine and thirteen two color tones sharp eleven and thirteen I could even switch them have my guide tones add the thirteen below add that sharp eleven below that's an interesting voicing for a C major 7 uh, with a 13 and a sharp 11.
So this is basically the way that I like to get people started off with voicings. Understanding where your root tones are, where's your one and five, understanding where your guide tones are, where's your three and seven, and then from there, adding things into the voicing, either roots, fifths, nines, sharp 11s, 13s, adding things into the voicing that change the color, and moving things around into different ranges of the keyboard. Um, I hope that's helpful. Uh, take care.